Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to another mystery video. Today we'll be talking about Michelle Carter and Comrade Roy and the text suicide case. I was watching the documentary and I got a little bit agitated with uh, with everything that they covered. It was it's such an interesting case and I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section. Before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe and little button down there. And if you want to know a little bit more about this case, then just keep on watching. Conrad and Michelle met each other in 2012 when both of them were visiting their families down in Florida. They lived about one hour away from each other back in Massachusetts, but they didn't meet more than five times in the course of their relationship. However, they did exchange thousands of text messages over the period of two years. Conrad Roy lived in Ma Mattapoisett, Massachusetts, and Michelle lived in Plainsville, Massachusetts, and both were, like I said, about an hour away. Conrad was born on September 12, 1995. He was described as a very loving and caring, playful boy. He loved being on sailboats. His family was in the business, so he loved spending time in the boats. When he was a junior in high school, he started working with his dad. During his parents' divorce, that's when Conrad's behavior started to shift, and parents started noticing how he was becoming more isolated, and his parents decided to take him to see doctors and psychiatrists to figure out what was going on. This is when he started taking an antidepressant medication. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a bit so you guys can see what I'm actually doing. Now, Michelle was born on August 11th, 1996. She was described as a good student, polite. Adults felt respected by her. She was overall a good kid. She was known as a really sweet, really caring young woman. At this time, Michelle was suffering from an eating disorder. She was also taking antidepressant medications, just like Conrad. Some of her friends did describe her as a very needy person. She would constantly text them, ask them if they wanted to hang out or if they had plans. She seemed very desperate to have friends. Now, on October 10, 2012, Conrad asked Michelle if she cared about him. He was, at this time, spiraling, and he was just really deep down in his depression. He said that he had tried to kill himself and that the voices in his head were telling him to do so. Conrad had already tried at least four times to commit suicide. According to his family, they didn't know how bad Conrad's depression was. His dad even said that everything seemed that it was going to the right direction. He had even gotten his captain's license. It seemed that he wanted to get into the family's business. At this point, we see how two very unstable individuals start becoming closer and start confiding in each other and just trusting each other with how bad they were both suffering inside. Michelle was very obsessed with the, uh, with the show Glee. She would even quote from lines from the TV show to things that she would tell Conrad. In October of 2013, Michelle was watching the episode on Glee where Corey unfortunately passed, passes away and they're doing the tribute. She tells Conrad that she, only, she wanted to tell him how much he meant for, to her and how much she loved him. This is the moment where it is apparent that Michelle had this idea that she would be the person that her boyfriend would tragically die. There was a point after Conrad's death that Michelle texted one of her friends and she said, quote, he was the greatest man I ever knew and I literally lived every day feeling like the luckiest girl in the world. And 
this was actually something that Leah Michelle mentioned in an interview with Ellen DeGeneres and she kind of like paraphrased it but it's basically the same thing that Leah said in that interview and um, I I literally lived every day of my life feeling like the luckiest girl in the whole world. I just I just thought he was the greatest man. This is where you could connect that Michelle maybe had that idea or that fantasy in her head of losing the boyfriend. One month before Conrad's death on June 13, 2014, he actually filmed himself in kind of like a vlog style where he is sharing about his social anxiety and how he feels that his social anxiety and depression are controlling his life. This is Conrad Henry Roy III reporting about social anxiety. Now I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. A lot of people tell me, a lot of people tell me that I have a lot going for me. I have to be happy. I have to be happy. Well, no, you don't have to be happy. Your happiness comes from what your conscious what goes con happiness comes from your conscious thoughts. On July 11, 2014, Michelle actually texted a couple of her friends telling them that she was very worried because Conrad was missing. While she was telling her friends that Conrad was missing, she was actually texting him, asking him when he was gonna get the gas machine. Obviously, Michelle's friends were concerned and they asked if the police was involved and obviously Michelle lied because at this point, Conrad wasn't missing. You know, he was barely planning and getting the things he needed to commit suicide. Michelle told her friends that it was all her fault that he had committed suicide and then they offered comfort and told her that it wasn't her fault. Her friends now were giving her so much attention and just the attention that she had always craved. And one of the theories is now that now she had to actually you know, convince Conrad to commit suicide so she wouldn't be seen as a liar. Michelle wanted the sympathy and the attention that she believed that she deserved, but obviously before this, she wasn't getting. She wanted to be the grieving girlfriend. Now, there are a lot of text messages between them two in the next following days, so I'm just gonna go over the most important ones. Okay, I can give you the best idea as to what was happening. On July 12th, so the next day, uh, Michelle actually texted Conrad and asked him if he had done it already and he said that he was too messed up. At this point, he knew that he wanted to do it but he was obviously terrified to do it. On the morning of July 13th, Conrad texted Michelle saying, like, why am I like this lately? Like two weeks ago, I was willing to try everything and now I am worse, really bad, and now I'm not falling through. It's eating me inside. To what Michelle replied, You're so hesitant because you keep overthinking it and pushing it off. You just need to do it, Conrad. The more you push it off, the more it will eat at you. You're ready and prepared. All you have to do is turn on the generator and you'll be free and happy. No more pushing it off. No more waiting. At this point, Michelle was getting, it seemed like she was getting very impatient and she asked, Conrad when was he gonna do it and he said after I walk my dog and so Michelle told him I'm serious like you can't even wait wait till tonight you have to do it when you get back from your walk Conrad then said that he was freaking out because of his family and Michelle told him that she was going to take care of them and she was going to be there for them at this point you could see that Michelle is being very pushy and just encouraging him to just get it over with. There's, I just couldn't believe that she was actually telling him all that she told him. At 6.20 that day, Conrad told Michelle that he was leaving his house. He was actually updating her um, and told her when she actually got to the place where he was going to do it. Michelle texted him. You can do this. 
At 6.28 that evening, Conrad called Michelle and they spoke on the phone for 42 minutes. Then at 7.12, Michelle called Conrad and they were on the phone for about 47 minutes. At 9.19 p.m., Michelle texted him asking him to please answer her. She said, I'm scared. Are you okay? I love you. Please answer. Then again at 10.38 p.m., Michelle texted Conrad again and she said, you're at your dad's house. Kate Camden told me. I'll get you help soon, I guess. I thought you actually did it. And that was the last text message that she had sent. Camden was Conrad's sister. Now on July 13th, Conrad's family realized that he did not sleep at home and this was very unlike him. So they decided to call the police and tell them that he was missing. Police unfortunately found Conrad's body inside his truck in the Kmart parking lot. Conrad was found dead by carbon dioxide poisoning and he had died by suicide. Conrad left a notebook full of suicide notes as well as the passwords for his computer and his iPhone. At this point, when investigators were searching Conrad's belongings, they stumbled upon thousands of messages where Michelle was actually encouraging him to take his own life. Among the suicide letters, they found one for Michelle and the letter said, keep strong in tough times. You taught me how to be strong and carry on. This life has been too challenging. I wish I could express my gratitude, but I feel brain dead. On July 13th, Michelle actually texted one of her friends asking her if they could do something so that she could take her mind off of things. Please excuse this eye, the glue, I just was having trouble with it. On September 13th, Michelle actually texted one of her friends that she was putting together an event called Homers for Conrad and it was an event where she wanted to raise money for mental health awareness. She was planning on having this event in Plainsville, Massachusetts where she was from. She texted her friend, I'm like famous now, ha ha ha. Conrad's friend, Tom, texted Michelle asking her why she was doing the event in Plainsville instead of Mattapuiset where Conrad was from. Michelle then replied that she didn't know how to organize it in a town that she didn't know. Tom suggested to move it to the place where Conrad was from because it would have been more convenient for his family and friends to attend. But Michelle replied, like, this was my idea. I created it to be here. Haha. Ha. He mentioned at the trial that it was very apparent that Michelle wanted to take credit and wanted to be known that it was her idea to have this event. Tom did go to the event and he saw Michelle there. And Michelle was just taking pictures with the teams and was just having a good time. He even described her as her being very happy. At this point, obviously she's getting all the attention and that's what she wanted all along. On September 15th, Michelle texted her friend Sam and told her again that it was her fault that Conrad had killed himself. She mentioned how Conrad had gotten out of the car and that she actually told him to get back inside. Now, one of the questions that uh, police had was like, why did she wait two months to tell anything to anybody? And why did she decide to tell Sam about it? On October 2nd, 2014, detectives went to Worth Wertham, Massachusetts to interview Michelle at her high school. Police asked her if she talked to Conrad at all the night that the incident had happened. She said that she had talked to him the night prior 
but that she had hung up the last time that he talked to her and he did not answer her and that she didn't think anything of it. Detectives already had a search warrant for Michelle's phone. They took away the phone from her. She did ask when she was going to get it back and police actually told her like, you'll get it back eventually. And that's when they went over everything that was on Michelle's phone, pictures, text messages. After reading thousands of messages, detectives realized that if it wasn't for Michelle, Conrad would have still be alive. On February 5th, 2015, the grand jury had an indic indictment for involuntary manslaughter for Michelle Carter. What does involuntary manslaughter mean? Because I had to actually research it. Manslaughter is the killing of one human being by another that is not premeditated. And in the state of Massachusetts, involuntary manslaughter occurs when someone unintentionally causes the death of another person. Michelle's attorney did not deny the evidence. Instead, they said that the conduct may be reprehensible. Therefore, she should not be charged with manslaughter in connection to Conrad's suicide. At this point, the court was going to charge whether there was enough evidence to rule a probable cause for the charge of involuntary manslaughter. Michelle's attorney said that he believes that somebody encouraging suicide should not be seen as a crime. Now, the defense team, Michelle's attorney, um, mentioned in the trial that Massachusetts is one of the 11 states that does not have a statue addressing this type of behavior, encouraging suicide. Then the jury went ahead and explained that involuntary manslaughter statute talks about doing a reckless conduct resulting or causing the death of an individual. But the defense team kept arguing that the death itself was caused by the victim and not that Michelle. She was not present when Conrad did it. The jury was not convinced and so the Supreme Judicial Court upholded the in indictment. Michelle Carter did go to trial in Taunton Juvenile Court for involuntary manslaughter. Some of her friends were interviewed at the trial, but they described themselves as just like at school friends. Um, they did mention how Michelle would ask them to um, hang out, but they always had other plans. Michelle would often express that she didn't have any friends. Now, according to Michelle's attorney, when they looked through Conrad's laptop, they did find hundreds of searches of on Google uh, that he had searched about suicide methods and ways to commit suicide and so the defense attorney did say that Conrad had a plan to take his own life. During the days leading up to Conrad's suicide, Conrad did express to Michelle that he was very scared to do it but she just kept at it and just kept encouraging for him to actually go through with it. On June 16th, 2017, Judge Moniz gave his verdict and he said that based on Michelle knowing that Conrad was in the truck and Michelle knowing that he had that generator in the car, Michelle did nothing and instructed him to go inside the car again when he actually had gone outside the car because he was scared because it was actually working. Knowing that, the court found Michelle guilty for Conrad's death. So if Michelle hadn't told him to go back inside the car, Michelle wouldn't have been found guilty. On August 3rd, 2017, Michelle Carter was convicted for the charge of involuntary manslaughter. Michelle's attorney tried to talk to the judge and say basically, that because of her age back then it had to do something with her level of maturity and that was one of the reasons maybe that she had acted the way that she did but fortunately judge Moniz did not find that Michelle's age level of maturity or even mental illness had nothing to do with the impact on her actions he said quote she was a bright young lady and did well in school and I'm satisfied that she was mindful of the actions for which now stands convicted. Judge Moniz sentenced Michelle for two and a half years at the Bristol County House of Correction.
Up until this point, Michelle had lived freely. She actually continued to li live freely up until her appeal date, which was on February 11th, 2019. In February 11th, 2019, Michelle's appeal was denied, and that day she was taken into custody. Michelle Carter was released on January 23rd of this year due to good behavior according to the Bristol County uh, spokesman and she will be in probation for five years. So that's it for today's story. Um, I did watch the documentary I Love You Now Die that's on HBO Max and they did make a movie uh, for this story which is called Conrad and Michelle and it's basically the story. I did not watch that movie. I actually found out after um, that they had actually made a movie about it. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts about this case. I personally do think that she had a lot of involvement. I do think it would have been better if she would have stayed in jail maybe a little bit longer. She literally served like a year in jail. Like I don't think that made justice. I mean nothing will bring Conrad back. So let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts on this case are. As always, the products that I use in today's video will be linked down in the description box as well as all my social media. And until then, I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye.